The workflow we'll use lets you fetch data in the same way for your specific needs, whether it's for an e-commerce business, car retail, or real estate. So you get alerts whenever what you're looking for becomes available. You don't need to know how to code at all. We'll be using a no-code platform called NAN, along with a scraper called Firecrawl that uses AI to automatically fetch whatever you need. In this video, we'll have a workflow scrape government websites for funding opportunities, so nonprofits can secure the grants they need to make a difference. Some websites let you subscribe to receive alerts for new opportunities, but not all of them do. Plus, when you're subscribed to multiple websites across different countries, you often face delays and get overwhelmed with tons of emails. That's where our scraping workflow comes in. We'll use AI to search for funding opportunities, check if they're already in our database, and if not, send the newly found opportunities straight to our email. I don't know about you, but even the slightest feeling that I might learn something new makes me feel extremely happy and deeply grateful for having access to a nearly infinite library of information, the internet. We can help more people feel this way through the giveinternet.org organization. Bring a student online in a few clicks. 1.1 billion school-age students don't have internet access and are falling behind in education, careers, and conversations. At giveinternet.org, you can sponsor internet fees and laptops for some of the most underserved students in Asia and Africa, starting at just $9 a month. Hi there, I'm Leo, welcome to the channel. Let's start off with just a blank workflow. All it has is a trigger node. So if I hit this button right here, it executes the uh, every node attached to it. And what we want to attach to it is a scraper. If I type scraper in here, you won't find a specific node for scraping. So what we're going to do is import this scraper, which I've just posted four hours ago. And what it is is basically a wrapper around the Firecrawl SDK, which we can now head over to settings, don't need to save that. Community nodes, install community node, place that in there, check that, and install it. It should take some seconds to just head back to your workflow. In your workflow now, probably you'll have to F5. So after the F5, we can search for a scraper, and now you'll find the Firecrawl scraper. I'll now select Extract and just organize my workflow, save that. The two websites we want to scrape is one from USA and another one from India. Both of them has kind of a similar structure. So you get the links. If you, if you click this, you'll go to the grant or it also has a name. It does have the funding agency here. And in grants.gov, we have an opportunity number, opportunity title, agency, opportunity status. And we have a lot of data to work with. So for now, let's just place the grants.gov in there. Get the credential, which the credential would be from Firecrawl, place that in the API key field, save it. And now probably just by specifying what we want, it might fetch that information for us. So what we want is to extract all the grants opportunities available. And it's kind of strange to say grants and opportunities like this, but I think it just better instructs the AI to understand that maybe in this table, there's nothing written grants and then it will get confused and know, okay, is it this that I want to scrape? But since it has opportunity written in here, so that kind of instructs it better, at least from my testings. Let's hit test setup and wait for whatever it brings back. Nice, so this is what we got back. Deadline, title, description, eligibility, funding amount, contact information, don't know where it got that from. But understand that despite this being structured, we don't know what to expect from that structure, but we can define what to expect by using a schema-based extraction. You can place in the schema like this. I, I think this is only better because it has this description field, so you can describe exactly what you want from each field. But if you use the generate from JSON example, just like this, it works just fine. You just won't have a lot of description onto what each field does. So in here, let me build this with you guys. So the first thing is, since we need a list of items, we need to place that inside of an array. And this will be an array of objects. These objects will have parameters such as ID. And this ID is important because it's the unique identifier that helps us understand if we fetched that grant previously or if it's a new funding opportunity that should be sent by email as an alert. We can kind of describe it right here. So a unique identifier, that should be fine. Now we'll want a link as well the link of the grants, a description if it's available. So description, the grants description. 
And finally, a date should be important. So the date when the... And here I'm going to specify something like month, day, and year. So just by having this, we have a predictable output. If I hit test step, you'll see that now all these parameters should be correctly used. And while that's loading, let me show you guys an extension. This is completely free. I just created it because, I don't know, maybe I was bored. And I thought, okay, NAN should have themes. <laughs> so I created something like this where you can just toggle different themes. Some of them aren't that good. I named it like this because I really like this color. But let's go back to default and see everything that was returned to us. So this is the expected output. We have an ID, date, link, and description, and it correctly fetched everything from there. Let's just speed this a little bit because you guys will have access to this workflow in either way. Uh, let's place a Postgres in here. This Postgres will create the table. It will help us identify which were the duplicates. We'll create the table using this query. So as soon as you execute this, let's just remove this. Hit test workflow. Every time you run this right now, it's not going to create the table every single time because we have this create table if not exists. So now it already created the table. If it did create the table, then perfect. Just head on and perform the scrape. Ideally, this first node will be triggered by a cron. So schedule trigger, that's it right there. Let's select it. Uh, you can select so every day it should run the script or every hour or every week. It all depends on what you want. But while we're testing, let's just use the click to trigger. Inside the Firecrawl scraper, I changed some things. So only the item underline ID. And I also added a name for the grant. Now at this point, let's create two branches. One of them is going to search inside of our Postgres. So Postgres, get the select rows from table. Then we'll select our table, return everything. Then when we hit test setup, probably it'll run the Firecrawl scraper. And that's okay. Let's test it. And as soon as it brings the data back, we'll pin it because then we don't have to execute this every single time we want to test the workflow. Awesome. Let's pin that right there. Go back to Canvas. Now, the other part of the branch will be splitting everything up. Let's select the node split out. And what we want to split are the opportunities array. So drag that there. If you hit set step, you'll see all the 30 items we want. Now, what we want to do is add a code node. What it's going to do is just lead coding, basic lead coding, to make it so that only items that aren't repeated are then continued. Because if they are repeated, it means that it was fetched from Postgres and also from the scraping. If that happens, it's because we already have it registered. And so it shouldn't continue to being processed and further than be emailed nor inserted inside of the database. That said, since we didn't insert anything inside of our database and we hit test workflow, we'll get all the 30 items outputted in this code node. Let's pin that down. Now we indeed want to register these items in our Postgres. Let's select the Postgres node and insert rows inside of the table. Choose the table, which is grants found. The item ID is this one. Drag that over there. Date, drag that there. For the link, just dragging and dropping it in its respective fields. As for the ID input, just remove it from here because if you leave that there, maybe executing right now will be fine. But as soon as you refresh this node, a zero will appear here and it will try to insert a duplicate ID that will mess up your entire workflow. So just remove that and you sh should be fine. Now, if I test setup, you'll see that I have everything in my database. Refreshing this, you'll see all the rows in there. And now saving and executing the workflow. Actually, now I have to remove these pinned documents, not for the fire crawl. Let's just test workflow like this. You'll see that I got 60 items. So why did that happen? I received 30 items from one node and 30 from another one. It doesn't process everything like it, it were 60 nodes. It processes first 30 nodes from one node and then 30 from another one. And there won't be duplicates in that scenario. So what will help us in this situation is a merge node. Let's drag this over here. Remove these connections. Drag the input there. Connect that, and now the identifier. I mean, we don't even need an identifier for the merge node. If we execute this test workflow, you'll see that it doesn't output anything because everything is repeated. So all it does is just stop. Now let's go over to our database and remove everything since we have added some extra things there. F5, remove, save, F5. Okay, everything is successfully removed. Saved, test workflow. Okay, now 30 items are inserted. If I hit test workflow again, no items should be inserted. 
So at this point, we can understand that if I remove any item from the database like this one, let's delete it there, okay, and hit test workflow, it should insert that item back. This is the structure we get for inserting an item, and we can't exactly use this structure to send it over to Gmail. If we select a Gmail node, there's all these inputs we need to fill in. But there's also the actual items. For this case, I only have one item. What if I deleted, let's say, three different items, save data changes, save, remove this as depend data, save again, test workflow. And there are issues because of Gmail test workflow. Okay, now it has three items. How would I exactly send these items over as an email? The best way that at least I thought out was using a code node to structure that as a string. This is how it will get outputted. So test setup, you'll see that the formatted text is in this structure and it's quite, kind of strange for us to read it like that. But for the Gmail, let's select the Gmail send message node, drag the formatted text over to message, select test to, is going to be to Leonardo 404 Gmail. Subject can be something like funding updates. That's great. And then if I hit test setup, this should send me an email. Let's see what I've received right now. Nice, so this is exactly what I received. You see that it has a pretty nice structure and we could style this even better, like making name, description, link, end date as bold. But I guess you guys got the idea. Now, what if I wanted to scrape another website like this website over here? Let's grab its link. And since it's the same structure, same thing I'm looking for, I can use the same exact node. And all I have to do is make this be an array. So just list that right there, close it, unpin. And now let's unpin our Postgres over here. So unpin, save, and just hit test workflow. Great, the workflow went well, and then I received the email. As you can see, the date is wrong, and that's because the website doesn't show an actual date for the, these grants in here. And we could fix this in many ways, like making a, another Firecall node, which searches inside of this link for the date, or maybe just fixing this code node right here. Like if the date is null, it just won't add it to the result. And yeah, we could add a lot of things to this workflow. Feel free to test it out. And if you do build something pretty nice with it, please share with us over at the AI Forge community as well as if you have any further questions, please let me know in the comment sections or inside of the community as well. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Till then.